weeks ago, I lost a cousin. He was visiting some of his friends who lived a couple of blocks away. Uh, normal Ramadan evening, he left their house at one, started walking home, and he was targeted by a drone. His lower half was shredded <coughs> to pieces. A couple hours later, his friend's house was also bombed. Two of his friends were killed, and everyone else in the house was wounded. No one at the town knew what happened to Muhammad. It was dark, he's on the side of the road, no one had any idea. But his dad rushed to the neighbor's house to help evacuate the wounded in fear of having another airstrike on the house. His dad was mad with him, saying, where is Muhammad? Why isn't he helping us in this bind? Then a couple hours later, when the, when the light started coming out, they saw his body on the side of the road. What? They saw his body on the side of the road. 22-year-old young man. His parents' eldest. Very bright and young. Very bright and energetic young man was killed for no apparent reason. A week later, house for a second cousin's family was bombed. Initially we heard that no one got hurt. Or actually, initially we heard three cousins were killed, or three people, the report was three people got killed, several wounded. And then the next account that came out that no one got hurt, breathed a big sigh of relief. Next morning I read the news about my cousin's funeral. The day after, the day after was a ceasefire for 12 hours or so, and the rescue teams managed to extract the bodies of two more cousins from under the rubbles. They were minding their own business in their house when they were hit. In 2012, my sister got wounded. Not even, nothing targeted their house, but there was a, an attack in their block that shattered their glasses, the glass of every house in their block, including her apartment, and a big shred of glass went, went through her heart. Back in 2009, two of my brothers were murdered. shot at by Israeli soldiers who knew them very well. They knew they were civilians and they shot at them. They shot without warning. They denied an ambulance to go rescue them. And they literally lit my brother. My brother Kassab was hit. They shot at the car. My dad docked, the car hit a wall. He was already struck with a bullet in his left arm. He docked, the car hit a wall, and the soldiers shouted at them and ordered them to get out of the car. They got out, my brother Kassab got out of the passenger seat, and he was struck with a hail of bullets. Later, we realized there were 18 bullets across the chest, stomach, and arms. Brother Abraham. 
he got out of the car and he was immediately hit with a bullet in his left leg under his knee. The soldiers were take occupy the civilian house that overlooked the road that was and they could see them, they could shout at them. They were about hundred or hundred and twenty feet away. Soldiers refused to provide them with any help. Not the bandit, not a glass of water, not a blanket, nothing. They were shot at around one PM on Friday. They refused, the soldiers refused to allow ambulances to come through. And Ibrahim passed away around midnight, 11, almost 11 hours later. He bled to death in his dad's arms. And my dad watched helplessly. And my dad was left there for another 12 hours until Israel allowed an ambulance to go through. They were just under a mile away from one of the largest hospitals in Gaza. If they were allowed to crawl to the hospital, they would have made it. But the soldiers refused to do that. Soldiers were positioned occupy the civilian house and they took 11 of the residents and neighbors as hostages as human shields in the house. Some of those residents, one of those residents spoke Hebrew and overheard the communication between the soldiers and their commander. When the soldiers saw the car approaching, they informed their commander that we see a civilian car coming. What should we do? And the commander said, shoot. Soldier wanted to confirm, shoot. And the commander said, shoot, shoot to kill. And they did. And then the soldiers were deliberating later with their commander. They had a medic within the unit. And they asked the commander, should we give them some medical help? And the commander said, no, we don't want. They're civilians. We don't want the story to get out. Let them, let them die. They did. Has the story gone out? Exactly. Because I spoke with my dad and managed to speak with my dad. That's, well, once he was transferred to the hospital. And he told me, he wrote the story in details, all the gruesome details from his hospital bed. He told me, I want you to get the story out. I want everyone in the world to know what they did to us. I want everyone in the world to know how they killed your brothers. We don't deserve this. And they should be held accountable. That's right. trying to follow through with what he asked me to do and to tell this story to everyone and anyone who would listen. And I remind everyone that this is one story of thousands, many of which are much more painful and much harder and have claimed many more lives. The one advantage we have to get our story out is I happen to be in this country, I happen to speak this language, and I happen to know people who connected me with other people, who connected me with other people. But I remind everyone when they hear that story that this is one of many stories.
Picture everyone. Picture all these screaming moms and dads. Picture all these screaming brothers and sisters. Picture all these screaming kids. And remember, everyone has a story. Every one of those stories deserve to be told and every story deserves to be heard. And I'm only doing a small part. Doing what I can. But hope you listen and I hope you remember these words and I hope you try to learn about more stories more people and try to do things and because yes we need to educate ourselves and learn what's happening and educate people around us but then we need to spring to action because we need to stop this insanity we need to stop the war crimes we need to end the siege, we need to end the killing, we need to end the occupation, and we need to hold, we have to hold the war criminals accountable. They cannot go on with this. That's right. There are many things we could do. We can go on BDS. Boycott, divestment, sanction has been very effective. Boycott, divestment, sanctions is a movement that was called for by the Palestinian civil society in, back in 2005. Was it taken seriously when it started? Nine years later, it has made leaps and bounds that Israel is trying to label BDS as anti-Semitism and has 